Welcome back, everyone. Here we are today talking more about um, Dr. Wayne Dyer's 101 Principles of How to Transform Your Life. So here we are with part two. If you tuned in for part one, great. If not, we're just going to dive into part two, and you can always go back for that one. So let's just uh, get into this principle. This principle, I find, is a really powerful one. It's really useful, and it's pretty straightforward, I find, overall. But, you know, you may disagree. We'll kind of look at it as we go into it. So we basically, to paraphrase, says that the doorway to higher awareness is inward, not outward. And this is our sacred quest, that a lot of the time people are looking outwards in their life for the solutions. Why is the solution not out there somewhere? Why can't I just find the right thing, find the right thing, and everything will go right? But that actually the solution is within us, and that it's useful to go into our inner level to find our essence as human beings and to find, you know, our source, basically. So the ending is a little bit up to interpretation, but I would start by interpreting the beginning as pretty straightforward from a scientific perspective of the fact that, you know, a lot of us are looking out for things in the world when we should be looking into how we view the world. Basically, our subconscious mind is putting slants on our reality in different ways. So if we see the world as a great place, then we're putting the slant of great. So we filter out these negative things and we see only the positive. We have more enjoyment, we make the world better. Or you could have this, you know, negative mental attitude kind of slants, you know, that puts it so the entire world looks bad and everything's bad and this is horrible and this and that and this and that and it's just awful basically and so that you if you have this idea that the world is awful then no matter what good experiences you look for you won't be able to see them because you keep seeing the world is awful the world is awful all that kind of stuff just every day so I think that's mainly what he's getting at there is that a lot of us are looking out into the world for where is this perfect thing? Because some people are like, oh, I just need to find my perfect romantic partner or I need to find the perfect job or I need to find the perfect business or all those kind of things. They think that if I just find this perfect thing, if I go to college and become an engineer or something, then my life is just going to work out. But, you know, they think that it's all in outward solutions. And that kind of gets me to The Alchemist. That's a fantastic book, Pablo Coelho. Uh, Sorry, I got the name wrong. Paulo Coelho um, there with his book, The Alchemist, which is absolutely fantastic. Just getting at this idea of the world's greatest lie is that people think that fate's going to take over at some point. I think this principle really just nips that world's greatest lie in the bud. Basically that, you know, at some point in the future, our fate, like fate's just going to jump in and suddenly we're just going to live a life based on that. And I think this principle is really against the idea of fate or that, you know, things are set in stone. It's really saying that a lot of our potential is within us and we don't change the world by going out into it. We change it first by looking in at ourselves. Sun Tzu, The Art of War, about how you need to know yourself and know the enemy. In this case, it would be like know yourself because otherwise life is going to throw things at you that you can't really deal with because the subconscious mind is so powerful. The subconscious mind is so powerful that it's like swimming up against a river to try to go forward. You're like, why can't I go forward? Because you're swimming upstream in it. So this principle really, I think, just establishes that idea that, you know, Higher awareness really comes from within us, from like within our own minds, from within our subconscious, you know, source. And so I think that's the real strength of this argument. And overall, it's a great principle that we need to look in at ourselves, and that is really how we can solve things. And as he says in the introduction of this whole bit on the 101 ways to transform your life, it's really about changing your thoughts and your actions on a day-to-day -day basis. So when we change that, like this, when we focus inward, when we really start to change how we think about our reality, then that can really transform a lot of our life here. Now the last bit of this one is a little bit more up to interpretation about silence, intelligence. If you know Dr. Wayne Dyer pretty well, you know he has his whole like, you know, it's the space between the bars that holds the tiger or the space between the notes is what creates the gap. You know, he's got this excellent gap meditation I recommend you check out. But basically, it just comes back to silence is the source and when you, you know, get to the source of your mind, silence through meditation, the gap, etc., that that's really where our infinite intelligence lies. And infinite intelligence is a little debatable depending on where you land on your thought process about this. From a purely scientific perspective, it just comes back to the idea of the subconscious mind is really the source of our our strength, you know, at a level that we can't understand just beyond 
pure consciousness. So if we want to raise our awareness, raise our intelligence, raise all that kind of stuff, then we focus inward on the subconscious mind and we can really transform our lives. I think this principle, principle two, is extremely powerful. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening. And let's get a dialogue going about it. Let's get talking about this stuff because it is fascinating. It's really helpful for changing our lives. And yeah, thanks for listening in. I'll see you next time.